All right, hope you did well on that checkup. And we have one last section that we're going to venture into some really new territory in Algebra 2. <clears throat> we're on page 23, 24, or page 11, 27. If I asked you what is the square root of 49, you would say 7, right? Pretty easy. 7 times 7 is 49. So what if I said what is the square root of negative 49? And whenever I ask my class that and ask my students that, every year they struggle with uh, negative 7? No, because negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49. And 7 times 7 is positive 49. So how do you get negative 49 by multiplying two things together? Because if you multiply them together, it's going to become a positive. <laughs> and mathematicians, and you'll read about that later. There's a guy who came up with this way of solving it. He said, let's separate out the square root of negative 1. Let's call this the square root of 49 times the square root of negative 1, okay? So even if I saw like the square root of 25, I could separate it out and say, let's do the square root of 25 and the square root of negative 1. But let's go a step further. Instead of always having to write the square root of negative 1, let's say that the square root of negative 1 is the letter i. It's usually kind of an italics i. And that stands for imaginary number, because really, the square root of negative 1, there is no real number that is the square root of negative 1. That part is the simplest thing that is actually just a figment of our imagination. We can't do anything to solve that. But, watch this. In, um, well, all right, I don't want to go off on a rabbit trail here. Let's take this and simplify it. What's the square root of 49? 7, okay, and now we can bring down the square root of negative 1 as i, and so we just write it as 7i. i, i, i. Square root of 25 is 5. Bring that down, we have i. We're done. So you see, it really isn't that hard. All right, and in a future lesson here, we're going to see that um, if I have, now watch this, i times i, Think about what that means. That means the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Do you remember when you have two, you have the same thing under the radical and they're being multiplied together, what happens? It pops out. So actually this becomes negative 1. So that you can't, <clears throat> don't in your mind start playing a game here and saying, oh, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, so i squared is positive 1. No. Whatever is under the radical pops out. So the negative 1 pops out if you have i times i. We could also write that as i squared, right? So think about what i to the third power means. i times i times i. Well, these two come together and just become negative 1, and then we keep the i. So i to the third would be negative i. I don't really need the one there. Technically, I could just say negative i. All right, here's where it gets interesting now. Watch what i to the fourth power is. I, 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 I. These two i's and these two i's each become negative one, and now we can do negative one times negative one, which would give you positive one. Isn't that cool? Okay. I'll stop there. Uh, you're actually, I think that's just a little side lesson. You're not going to have to do this for a little while, but we'll just kind of introduce it, lay it out there so you can see it. What if we had a problem where we had um, 3i plus 5i? Can we do something with that? Yes, we can. We can combine that and get 8i. That's kind of like we were doing with x's and a's and other variables. It's just that we're doing it now with i. Uh, what if we had, instead of just screwing a 49, negative 49, what if we had a 3 here in front? And I had 3 times that. Well, this part simplified to become this. So, let me erase this. Basically, we would just be saying 3 times that, which would just become 21i. Okay? 
All right, let me take a challenging one that actually I think this one is somewhere in your homework. All right. Negative one half times the square root of negative 144. <clears throat> so let's separate this first and just say the square root of 144. The negative becomes i, and then we'll leave the negative one half out front. Now, what does this become? Square root of 144 is 12. Okay. Keep the i there, negative one half, and now you just multiply. One half times 12, half of 12, 12 divided by 2, okay? Keep the negative and you just keep the i attached as part of your answer. All right, <clears throat> I think that's enough. That should be able to help you do definitely the top of page 24. And then even here on the bottom of page 24, these problems are just in two parts you take just just like this simplify each part and then you just link them together with a plus or maybe there's a minus in there and have two terms in your answer and if they happen to be like terms you can combine them otherwise you just list them side by side so i'll let you do that and then we'll come back and talk about page 25 in a little bit